Tons of documentary films came out in 2021, but of course, only five can be nominated for Best Documentary Feature at the Oscars. So let's talk about them. Hey guys, Dan here. This is Dan Reviews It, and welcome to my review of the documentary feature film nominees for this year's Oscars. I know we're really just a few days away from the big show uh, when I'm recording this, so possibly by the time you watch this, the Oscars will have been over, but I was waiting a very long time for one of the nominees to be available somewhere, and just yesterday or the day before, it went up on YouTube to rent, so I was able to do that and finally watch the movie Writing with Fire, so we're going to review that. We're going to review Ascension. We're going to review Attica. Two of the five I have already reviewed in long-form videos, so I'm not going to really talk too much about Flea and Summer of Soul, but I will mention them uh, as they are part of the mix as well. Before we dive into the best documentaries, possibly, of uh, 2021, at least according to the Oscars, they are the best five. Uh, I do want to welcome you into Dan Reviews It. Thank you for finding this video. Uh, I've done a lot of Oscar nominee videos. They're under the heading Oscar Watch in my uh, video collection. And then also, uh, my buddy Tim and I did an entire like 45 minute video on Oscar nominees in the major categories and what we think will win and should win. Um, so that you could check out as well. And if this is airing, if you're watching this, I should say after the Oscars, well, you can take a look at that video and see how many we got correct. Uh, some we agreed on and others uh, we did not. So all right, before we get into the three new ones, um, I want to talk just briefly about Flea and Summer of Soul. So Flea, I just reviewed a couple of weeks ago. This is up actually for three awards. It's not only Best Documentary, but it's up for Best International Feature and Best Animated Film as well, because it is mostly animated. And uh, it is about uh, this guy who, part of the reason I think it's animated is he wants uh, anonymity uh, in his storytelling. But uh, he has an alias here named Amin, and he is telling his story of fleeing his country for the first time and um, making a life for himself elsewhere. And, uh, you know, we, we got uh, a lot of interesting things in this documentary. It's very uh, hard to watch in parts because even though it's it's mostly animated, him telling his, you know, harrowing tale uh, hits very, very hard. I did not quite love so much the present day stuff where he's sort of telling us about his struggles now. I liked hearing about um, the stuff maybe we don't always hear about. And he is uh, part of the LGBTQ community as well. So that sort of factors into his storytelling a little bit too, especially growing up um, in, in a country that really uh, does not care for that kind of lifestyle. Um, so I, I liked this movie a lot. I gave it an A-. minus. Uh, so definitely uh, maybe among the best docs for me in 2021. Um, and I think we'll talk about each movie's chances uh, at the end of the video. Um, so stay tuned for that. But uh, next is Summer of Soul. I did a big long video on that. I think it was like 16 minutes. Uh, this is, I'll, I'll just sort of spoil my grade uh, anyway while we're talking about it. But this is one of only... Two films thus far that I've given an A plus to for 2021. West Side Story is the other one. But uh, Summer of Soul, the, the full title, or When the Revolution Could Not Be Televised. Uh, and this this and Flea are really the, the two front runners for the documentary category. So this one could take it. We don't know yet. Um, but good old Questlove from the Roots crew directed this. This is his uh, directorial debut. It received a ton of accolades from all over the place uh, in not only documentary categories, but in Grammy awards as well. Um, it was nominated for Best uh, Music Film. Uh, so a lot of love from, from all circles of the world here. And this is about this uh, 1969 Harlem Culture Festival that basically has gone unheard of and under the radar, certainly, uh, because of Woodstock overshadowing it the same summer. In fact, this ran for several weeks, and I think one of the weeks, if I'm remembering correctly, because I watched this months ago, uh, was on the same weekend as Woodstock. But, you know, obviously because of some racial tension and, um, you know, maybe because almost all of the artists were black, uh, it got sort of swept under the rug. And so Questlove, through... Whatever process, I don't know how they clean this footage up so much, but it looks like it was shot last week. I mean, it looks gorgeous. It's it's similar to that uh, Peter Jackson Beatles documentary, Get Back, um, which was not quite a documentary film, so I don't think it, it qualified for this category. Um, but 
same stuff. Like, it was filmed from the late 60s, early 70s, I think, in that case. This is all from 69. And, I mean, it looks brilliantly clear. Um, so hard to believe. But uh, this was just a, a great, great movie. Um, and, and a feel-good movie as well. Yes, there are some talk. Uh, there is some talk, certainly, about the racial tension and strife. Um, and, you know, we had some of the beginnings of some famous black figures in this movie. Al Sharpton was there. Jesse Jackson was there. So uh, a lot of them sort of at, at the beginning of their careers politically um, appearing in this movie, you know, in the video. And then Al Sharpton actually was interviewed in present day, too. Um, but this is just it's one to watch for sure. It's my favorite documentary of the year. It's one of my favorite documentaries ever. I think I've only given maybe three docs in A+. Plus, um, and this is certainly one of them. So um, A+, plus for Summer of Soul, for sure. All right. So let's talk now about some of these other ones that I have not yet gotten to. We're just going to go in alphabetical order. Um, Ascension is the first one. And this is uh, produced or uh, directed, well, I'm produced, I guess, but, but directed by Jessica Kingdon. And uh, it follows basically the pursuit of the Chinese dream through social classes um, and productivity and innovation. Um, and as well, taking us into the new era with social media and stuff. Um, so this for me was a little bit of a mixed bag. Uh, I thought a lot of it was interesting, but um, like the first, I would say third maybe a little more, focuses on sort of the, the class system and the different struggles of blue-collar workers and factory workers and all of that kind of stuff. And then it veers more into the social media aspect of it and the marketing and uh, that sort of thing of sort of the new technologies. And that's where it lost me a little bit. We focused a lot on these, uh, you know, influencers, tastemakers, whatever, um, and, and how they are, you know, living the new Chinese dream and, and getting famous and, and all of that off of their social media content. And are they working as hard as, say, a factory worker? And, oh, well, yeah, some in some ways, yes, some ways, no. They sort of take a look at it for, from all angles. Um, I, I think that's sort of where the film loses focus, and it's a good, like, half of it. Um but the first half is incredibly riveting, definitely uh, makes up for some of that. Um, and it's interesting what type of uh, factory work that they're letting us sort of see the inside of. Because, of course, many things, as we know, bear the Made in China label. So they make a little bit of everything over there. Um, but there was an interesting, like, I would say close to 10 minutes, at least seven or eight minutes, they spent on this sex toy factory and sex dolls to be specific and they were going over like the you know the latex of them and, and how exactly they're made and oh this person's sole job is to paint the the nipple area you know it was all very interesting um so yeah i i i i even though it was like okay this maybe we're taking this you know too too long um but very interesting and some of the stuff at the beginning as well um, featured, you know, like sort of militant almost, you know, salutes that we had to uh, give at the beginning of our work day and uh, mantras that we had to say about how great, you know, our boss is and the factory. And it was uh, it was a very, very revealing documentary in that part. Once they got, like I said, more to the social media aspect, I didn't care as much um, because oddly enough, I think that's pretty similar the world over in terms of marketing yourself on social media in that way. So that didn't quite speak to me as uniquely as the um, the first half about the factory workers and, and all that kind of stuff. Um, but it is a nice sort of dichotomy of like, okay, you know, here's how people, you know, 40 and 50 or older lived their Chinese dream, you know, quote unquote, um, versus the people of today. It is certainly different. And, and the contrast was interesting to see, but it certainly loses its focus, uh, you know, from that part. Also, the score was a little bit overpowering and odd, even um, at, at times. So I, I, that stuck out to me. Usually if a score either, um, you know, is, is really great or maybe not quite so good is the only times it ever sticks out to me. Otherwise, I barely notice it. It's usually like completely fine, you know, or whatever. But um, this, I felt like it was like this 
intense score in places that I, I'm not sure if it works. So for me, uh, this one does not rank up there with the best documentaries of the year. I do think it has a lot of interesting things to say, um, but I will leave Ascension with a B. Next, we will talk about Attica. Uh, and this actually is a Showtime original documentary. Um, I guess it, it entered some film festivals and therefore it is uh, in contention then for the Oscars. And of course, it does have to, I guess, play for a week in New York and a week in L.A. to be considered. But it premiered, uh, other than this one film festival in Toronto, it premiered on Showtime uh, in October of 2021 for everybody to watch. But this is a, a look back at 50 years uh, or 50 years later, I should say, at the Attica uprising um, through different interviews with a lot of people that were there, mostly black and Latino inmates who were there at the time. And and I, I think a lot of people have heard about the Attica prison riots and uh, at least know that Attica is a pretty hardcore prison, um, if, if not maybe about the riots themselves. Uh, but I really didn't know too much about it beyond that. Um, I guess if I thought about it, maybe I would have known it took place around that sort of late 60s, early 70s era of all of that racial tension I was mentioning earlier. Um, and so this does take place from 1971. And there's actually a surprising amount of footage um, at that event, um, I guess, because a lot of news crews were there does sort of make sense in that regard that, yeah, a lot of people were filming what was going on. And so they interview, there's like three or four main guys that they interview that were there. Um, but they also talk about, um, or talk with some of the people who were guards there who lost their lives in the riot as well. And they talked to their kids. Um, this was really, really interesting. And, uh, at times a hard watch for sure. Um, you know, but, the parallels are certainly there that, okay, the prison system uh, maybe has come so far in certain ways, but in other ways, not so much. And still a lot of uh, specifically rach racial strife in the prison system here in the United States. Um, that certainly has, has not changed that much since the 70s. But uh, this was uh, another sort of, you know, a lot of documentaries have a stark topic that we are just sort of riveted to because it's almost like why isn't this a narrative film how can this be happening how did this happen and why have we not come so far and what's great about this movie is specifically they don't hammer you over the head with how things are the same um i forget what exactly it was i watched uh i think oh it was this lincoln it was called Lincoln's Dilemma, um, and it's a TV show on Peacock, and it starts with, you know, a, a clip of the Capitol riots on January 6th, and I was like, all right, you know, we don't necessarily have to bring that up with Lincoln, just tell Lincoln's story, you know, we'll, we'll sort of draw our own conclusions whether things have changed or not. Here, they don't do anything like that. It, they really just sort of present you, here's the facts, you know, as we lived them or, or you know, as our parents told us or whatever, Um and along with the video footage, which is at times very hard to watch, um, we get that complete picture of what it may have been like uh, back then in Attica. And, you know, I, for one, drew my own conclusions about it, about, uh, you know, maybe things not quite so much changing uh, in this day and age. It's still a huge problem. And, you know, prisons uh, are a great deal for profit, uh, I, I think, now and, and then. Um, so I, I think... The viewer can draw their own conclusions on that, and I sort of liked that aspect of it, that they weren't hammering you over the head with, okay, well, here's what you should think about now. No, we focused almost exclusively on that incident, and really it was just, what, like five days or something like that, you know, focusing so uh, much in just on that short amount of time, um, but boy, it, it's riveting and uh, great that we still have some of these men with us that were part of that that can really speak uh, on their own horrifying experiences, uh, either, you know, as a prisoner or somebody, you know, working there at the time. Um, so I give Attica an A. This for me was uh, definitely one of the best of the year. Deserves to be in contention for sure um, with that best documentary feature. All right. And then Writing with Fire is where we will close. This one is the one I was sort of waiting for. I watched these other ones a while ago, and I was hoping Writing with Fire would either come to my local art house cinema because they did run a lot of the Oscar movies. Um, 
and they ran some of the like international features and stuff and this is in a different language so nah they didn't run it i emailed even the uh producers or the studio or whatever whatever the link said on the website for the movie and i said hey like i i don't need a free copy i just want to know like can i download this movie somewhere like when will it be available they didn't get back to me so okay um but uh, luckily this week i saw that it was up on youtube so finally i can uh, watch it and review it so yeah this uh is mostly in uh, hindi and it takes place uh, in india and basically it's this uh, women-led newspaper called uh, kaibar laria um, and after 14 years in print, they are switching to digital journalism using smartphones, which uh, many people in India don't have. And many of the, especially, you know, the, the, the people working on this are lower class. And uh, a lot of them had never even used a cellular phone, a mobile phone before, um, let alone, you know, doing reporting and journalism on it. So this was a very interesting one. This uh, had, has a lot of accolades going into the Oscars as well. Um, it won two awards at Sundance, uh, the Audience Award, and a special jury award in the World Documentary Cinema category. Um, and yeah, I mean, it, it just basically shows us uh, these women that some whom started the, the uh, newspaper 14 years ago and, and many who are just sort of starting out in the journalism world. But, you know, a couple of strikes against you. Number one, you know, these are poor women from poor communities. They, they have sort of a graphic um, at the intro of the movie saying about the caste system and all that sort of stuff if you don't know. And so, yeah, these are definitely from, you know, the lower end. Um, so that's one strike. But number two and, and probably the biggest one is that they're women. And not only are women not looked upon well in uh, certain sects in India, but in this particular, you know, region, uh, they are, you know, supposed to be subservient to men. And, and how dare you interview me? Um, you know, you're a woman, you're nothing, this and that. And we see a lot of that, you know, live to tape here in this movie. Um, so I think the most riveting stuff for me in this movie was the actual aspect of making the paper and switching from print to the digital um, in this, you know, new age. But a lot of people, you know, there don't know what that means or how to do it or what that is. But they get this YouTube channel going up and running and, and the, the, the views start coming in, the subscribers start coming in. Um, and we see several of these women go on actual stories and and talk to some people that are mostly pretty reluctant i'm sure they get some that are happy um to talk to them but you know we don't necessarily see a lot of those in this documentary but a lot of them are hesitant a lot of them are hesitant not only because they're women but they don't want to be filmed because what they're saying may be going against their job or going against their government um you know or anything like that so um there's a few different fine lines here that uh, people don't want to necessarily cross but look this is uh, an empowering story of very smart women who decided to you know buck what their community has told them and and gone with their gut and want wanting to expose you know some injustices in their community and in their world you know, in, in their country. Um, and it was very riveting uh, in that respect. I would say, um, you know, one of the negatives is it does become a little bit repetitive with, okay, let's, you know, send this person onto this story. And then, okay, they get in an argument with the person about it and explain to them, no, you know, this is just for this and that. It got a little bit repetitive in that regard. I, I would have liked to maybe have them focus in a little bit more on that shift to the digital journalism. I think that's where sort of the, the, the meat of this story was. But either way you cut it, these are very, very strong and smart women. And this is just a great movie for uh, woman, woman empowerment and all of that sort of stuff. Um, and we don't get that often from, I think, that area of the world. So uh, it was very, very cool to see that and to hear them, you know, be interviewed and to talk, you know, and, and one one of my favorite scenes actually does involve them going out on one of their stories. But um, the guy wants to sort of bribe them. Oh, I'll do your story, but we need to be on the front page. You know, we'll get we'll pay you X amount to be on your front page. And she straight out was like, yeah, we don't do that. We you know, if the if the story is front page worthy, it goes on the front page, but we don't do bribes here, you know, and, and look, uh, 
uh, maybe it was a little bit for the cameras too, but it was a great scene, you know, I really, I was like, yeah, dude, tell that guy off, whatever, um, so I like that, so this one, uh, for me, it's not quite to the level of, of some of the other ones in the category, but I leave, uh, writing with fire with an A minus, maybe one of the best journalism documentaries I've seen, um, probably the best I've seen, but I know there's a few out there that are very highly regarded. But anyway, in terms of the Oscar chances, I do think it's going to be a two-horse race between Flea and Summer of Soul. That's where sort of all the m momentum is. Um, Flea obviously has some opportunities in other categories, but I think Best International is going to go to Drive My Car, and I think Best Animated is probably going to go to Encanto. Um, so I think Flea, uh, Flea has its best shot in the documentary category, but... Summer of Soul probably has the lion's share of the documentary awards from the awards season from all over the place. So that one could, could certainly take it as well. And I think probably will, but I think it's, it's going to be like, like a 55%, 45% kind of thing, maybe one or 2% each for some of these other ones. Writing with Fire, I think could be a potential dark horse. Uh, I do not think Ascension or Attica is going to take the uh, prize. But uh, for me, the best doc of the year is Summer of Soul, but Attica is, is probably number two there. Um, and, and from this group, you know, Flea would be next and then writing with Fire and then uh, somewhere below that would be Ascension. So thank you for watching and uh, we'll see everybody next time on Damn Reviews It. Bye.